some mornings I am out here way too early. I always ask myself, what the hell am I doing? Building a plane. Eating a bagel. So uh, in the last video, I was working on this and I'm gonna continue working on this. The one thing I had said is it's okay to leave this bluing on. While technically that is true, the next step after you get all these holes drilled is you have to go back through and machine countersink some of these various holes, which are in the in the uh, in the instructions, the, the the wing walk doublers, which are these, and then several of these along here, as well as dimpling this one up here. And you should not do that with the bluing on. Uh, I should have taken the bluing off the smaller skin before I did all this, because now I've got to literally take all this off, pull the bluing off, and then put it all back on to do the work. Um, and I think I did that last time too, uh, and I I forgot to write myself a note, and so. Uh, repeating the history. So anyways, on to that. Hi guys. Yeah, it's a little early out here, but that's all right. I don't mind. I come out, I work on the plane, you know, give it a couple hours here and there. Sometimes it's late in the afternoon. Sometimes it's early in the morning. Eh. Uh, as I just talked about, you can see here, I'm pulling off all the bluing and getting that in there. And uh, someone had a while back had asked me if I regret not getting a pneumatic uh, Clico puller. Times like this, I do. Um, uh, you're you're going to be going a lot with that with the with the pliers, and uh, it wears on your hand real quickly. You get you know I'm going to have good strong hands after this. Uh, I don't know how much those cost. I mean they're probably not very expensive. If you're going to be doing lots and lots of clicos, then sure I can see getting one. But honestly at this point, meh. I don't I don't know that you need one. I think you can do everything by hand. Just change between hands, and if your hand gets tired, stop for a few seconds. Um, but working on that. What else? Uh, oh, I had people ask me about these. Um, these are uh, Plantronics. What's the model? Um, is it written on here? I don't think it is. These are just Plantronic headsets. So they're the in-ear Bluetooth headsets. Uh, and they're meant for like sports, you know, they're like waterproof and all that. Well, I don't know if they're waterproof, they're water resistance, like sweat. You don't want to swim in them or anything. But you know, they're meant for people to go running. I don't do a lot of running. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, they're pretty good. I like them. Uh, and so I, I listen to a lot of audiobooks and a lot of streaming music and podcasts and things like that. It's just something to do. It's not, I don't ever record my sound or anything. The sound recording is on this mic right here. But you probably, that was probably really loud, sorry. Um, so that's that. Anyways, gonna jump back. Oh, oh, one other thing. Someone asked in the previous video if, um, where I am with my flying and if I'm still going to do commercial. Good question. I don't know. And the reason I say I don't know is because uh, the thing, the, the thing that keep, people kept saying over and over and over again was, be careful, if you turn your hobby into a career, you lose your hobby. And I've experienced exactly that. So when I was a software guy, all those years, uh, in, 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 you know, 19, from 1980 basically until 1995, I programmed for fun and it was a hobby and I really enjoyed it. Uh, but uh, shortly after getting, well, really in the military and then after the military, I turned programming into a career. And for a long time, I, I always said I was lucky enough to turn my hobby into a career. Uh, but yeah, I lost my hobby. I don't really like programming anymore and I don't really want to do it all that much if I can avoid it. And so I'm kind of applying that lesson to the flying thing. If I turn it into a career, I'm going to lose the hobby. So I don't know. I'm stalling. I'm stalling while I kind of do some soul searching and figuring out what I want to do. Am I going to get my pilot's license and fly? Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But as a career, eh, I'm kind of leaning towards no, I think. Uh, again, a lot of people have come and said, hey, you know, do it or give it a try, but just know that this happens. And, and I've had people that, uh, that fly for 20 years say that, you know, they love flying. And I asked them, really, what kind of plane do you own? Oh, I don't own a plane. I would never fly for, well, okay. You know, they love the job, but they don't like doing it. And it's like, okay, they've lost the passion for just general aviation and fun, fun flying, which is kind of what I want. So. I don't know, I think I might not do it. I don't know, I'm still kicking it around. Uh, I do need to get a job, uh, gainful, you know, get gainfully employed, otherwise my wife will throw a tantrum. So uh, I don't know, I'll keep you posted, we'll figure it out. Uh, I've, got, I've got a lot of time, so I'm not too terribly worried about it. Anyways, 
So there's the answer to that. Hope that answers your question. I'm going to get back to it. So 16.2-3. So step three on that page uh, has to do with these uh, upsized holes that we went through and drilled up to number 19. It's for nut plates, right? Uh, and specifically, this top one up here, uh, remember this is the aft of the plane this way, this top one is actually dimpled. Uh, and the reason that this one is dimpled, whereas all of the rest of them are machine countersunk, is because this one is just one piece of skin. That's the only thing here. Whereas, you know, this one, 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 etc have not only the doubler that's back here, but there's also this rib right here. And so you would have to machine, you would have to uh, dimple three different pieces uh, to get the number eight screw. And that would be horrible. It just wouldn't, it would not seat correctly. So instead they machine countersink these, um, as well as all these, which we'll get to in a minute. So uh, we need to dimple this guy for a screw so that that will fit down in there. And thankfully, when I bought my uh, dimple die set, it came with the number eight dimple. And so I just put it in the squeezer and we're gonna go this route. Now, could you use the, 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 the uh, DRDT2 or the Whack-A-Mole C-Frame style dimpler? Of course, uh, but you would have to take this all off and go do it as opposed to just leaving it on here. And I wanna leave it on here now because I'm gonna to have to go through and machine countersink all of the doubler holes. And it's much easier to do that when it's assembled and everything will line up correctly than it is to take everything off, do one dimple, right? And then put everything back on. Uh, and that trying to limit the amount of times you have to take it apart and put it on and take it apart and put it on, which is people have brought up before. You're gonna to have to do it no matter what, but if you can limit it, let's limit it. So here we go. Now this should sort of disappear down in there like that. Awesome. So the next thing we have to do is we have to dimple those two holes top and bottom below that number 19 hole that seats the uh, number eight screw. The problem that we now have though is if you look at this picture right here, you can see that that big fat dimple die is going to crush that number 19 dimple, or, or number eight dimple rather. So that's bad. So instead, uh, what I also have is one of these. It's a much thinner uh, uh, female end to the, the number 40 dimple so that this happens. It lines up beautifully, you don't crush it, and in the end, it turns out perfect. So I would definitely suggest getting one of those. Uh, again, there's the fat, uh, side you want. There's the, the fat male and the fat female that you want, and those work perfectly on the skins and whatnot, but you're also going to want the thin female because it, it does come in handy at times like this. Sometimes you just have no choice. There's no other way to do it. So I've had people online and in person actually bring up the same thing, and that is whether or not this plane seems like it is solid or well built. And I think that comes from the fact that the aluminum parts and pieces that you get are, they're a little flimsy, right? They don't seem like they're all that substantial. But once you put everything together, they're as beefy and as sturdy as any other plane. I mean, it's, it's actually incredibly well designed. Good job, Vans. So uh, is the plane sturdy? Yes, I think it is. But uh, I can understand people being a little disconcerted when they received the plane in that you know in that box and it's just a pile of flimsy parts. Why you might think, eh, you know that doesn't seem like uh, seem like uh, it's going to be good material for an airplane. And I, it, that might also lend to the notion that I think some people have, and when you tell them that you're building an airplane, right? They they quite often think that you're building it out of uh, bubble gum, duct tape, balsa wood, and spit. Um, and of course, you're not. So um, yes, the, some of the pieces do feel a little flimsy, but once you put it all together, it's not one piece, right? It ends up being one piece that attaches to another piece, which has a piece over that, which is riveted 47 times. And, you know, so it, it just, it's, it's solid. It's well built. So don't worry about it. So this is not the first time that I have tried this. 
Um, but it's probably the first time that I've given it a fair shake in that uh, previously either I used too short of a tool or I didn't have good leverage, whereas this way I, I have good leverage. Um, obviously just a broom, but the idea is to get this, this uh, bluing stuff off the skin quickly and easily, which it, it is a pain. It's, it's difficult. You've, you've seen me struggle on previous uh, skins to do this just have to get it started here which is pretty ugly <laughs> but yeah once it's once it's started we can put the aforementioned tool on here wrap some of the bluing around it and you can see there's lots of bluing on there from the last couple times I did it and then it's just a matter of leverage turning it and the bluing comes off pretty quick and easily actually so uh, to my friends who keep telling me to do this I was not giving it a fair shake previously this is pretty dang easy uh, and there's very little chance of screwing up the skin probably a bigger uh, PVC pipe, something's thicker, would just roll it off easy and easier. But this is pretty simple. So, there you go. Quick way to get the skin off. Oh no, we ripped it! Oh, whipped the blue wing. That happens. <laughs> anyway, just ah, thought I'd share with you that I do listen to you guys. And when you make suggestions, I give it a try. So, this works. Finally, I want to apologize. This video took a little longer to produce than normal because um, Adobe, which is the product that I use, Adobe Premiere, is the product that I use to build these videos. Uh, they recently updated their software and um, as they are often wont to do, when they update their software, they change a bunch of things. And this last change actually broke my ability to import videos off my little action cameras. It was importing the video, but not the audio. And it took me a couple days to sort out what the heck was going on and, and why that was doing that. Uh, so it, it actively prevented me from, uh, from working on the videos. So just, if you guys wanna do the videos thing, uh, Adobe is a good product. It's actually a, a really good piece of software, but there are lots of different ones out there. And sometimes you do have to change your uh, methods just based on an update, right? Uh, and this is one of those updates that broke my, my uh, method of, of building the video. So we're back up and running now. And with that, uh, thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. I'll try to get the other video out a little, a, a little more quickly than this one was. Uh, if you do me a favor, give me a thumbs up on the video below. That helps my rankings within YouTube. Uh, and if you really want to uh, subscribe to the channel, click the subscribe button. And if you really, really want to help, you can always join my Patreon campaign and send me a dollar a month or give me a cup of coffee or something like that. Thanks a bunch, everybody. Remember, you can build one of these too. This thing is totally doable. Uh, it's an awesome project. It, it, it takes a long time um, coming up on two years here soon that I've been working on this thing uh, but it, it is totally doable and if you like to build things like if if putting you know IKEA furniture together is your thing and you're that kind of mentally broken like I am this is awesome it's a great it's a great project so thanks a bunch guys see you next time